If you would this evening, open up your Bibles to James chapter 2. James chapter 2 is, I think, a great passage that we can turn to whenever we're evangelizing, whenever we're talking with folks, especially with those that say they have faith. It's a passage that has frequently been gone to when you're trying to study with folks, when you're trying to share the gospel with folks, and they talk about their faith, and you just simply ask them, well, what does that mean? What is faith? What does it mean to you? To have faith. What kind of faith do you have? Because James, I I wrote down, details three different kinds of faith. They're in James chapter 2, verses 14 down through verse 26. It's a passage that should be familiar to most of us. But just as we've looked at Acts chapter 2 and similar short accounts that, okay, here's something, here's quick that we can take as a snippet that we can share with those around us. I want to do that with James chapter 2 as well this evening. Starting with the idea, just in the first couple of verses, that we can have a dead faith. James chapter 2, beginning in verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed, and be filled. But you do not give them these things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Try asking the same question that James just asked. Or maybe word it slightly differently. Great, you have faith. What do you do? That's wonderful that you believe in God. How do you serve Him? Where do you go to church? Are you involved in any Bible studies? Are you working on any teaching? What are you doing in His kingdom? James is pretty much asking that question. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone has faith but does not have works? It's all well and good to say you have faith. How do you prove it? Well, I just believe it in my heart. Well, I just love God. Well, I go to church when the doors are open. That's wonderful. Is that enough? Can that kind of faith save us? Is that all that Christ is asking for? Because James says, let me give you some examples. Verse 15 and 16. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute and in need of daily food, and you say, depart, be warmed and be filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does this profit? All right, you have faith. Do you see other people around you that also need faith? That need the word of God? that are lost and walking in darkness? What are you doing to share that? You see people physically and spiritually in need. How are you helping them? I could ask the same questions of you this evening, but we're focusing on this from an evangelistic perspective. We're trying to get people to think. To get them to realize the same thing that James is asking, the same thing that Christ asked us. Does it stop at you go, well, that's a sin, but you do nothing about it? What kind of faith do you have? Does that kind of faith help? To know what sin is, to recognize it, and do nothing. Does that further the work of the kingdom? Or, as James says, is that a dead and useless faith? Well, maybe you do more than recognize it. Maybe you know, I, not just how I recognize it, I know something needs to be done about this. Someone should do something about this. It, it just pains me, it hurts me to see people engaged in sin like this and talking like this and acting like this and living like this. You're right, I agree. What are you doing about it? Have you talked to your neighbors and family and friends? Have you tried to bring them to church? Have you tried to do something about this? Or is there something lacking in your faith? 
this works with the coworker, this works with weak brethren that aren't taking the next step to fully serve our God as we talked about this morning. It works with us. What are we doing? You recognize something needs to be done, but you don't take action. Just intellectually knowing this situation isn't right, but not doing anything doesn't help anybody. The problem still remains. The brother or sister is still naked and destitute of daily food. The person is still walking in darkness and without hope, without help. Just because you believe something and know something needs to be done doesn't fix the problem. Some people have faith like this. They have the ability to help. I see, I know that someone is in need. They are walking in darkness. They're destitute of daily food. They need help. But I can't be bothered right now. I'm too busy. I've got too much going on. And they wouldn't want my help anyway. Now we're going beyond, I know I need to do something. I have the ability to help. If you have real faith and that faith has been building upon itself, you know the scriptures. You know God's word. You know how to help people. You know the way to truth and life, but you're not sharing it with those around you. What kind of faith is this? You know, if it's found out if there's a doctor in the house when there's a medical emergency and they don't stand up to help, they can lose their license? Forever? Because they have the ability to help. They have the knowledge, they have the skill set to know how to help someone that their life might be saved. But if they don't do it, they're shunned from the community. They're no longer allowed to practice. They can't be a doctor because they have the knowledge and the skill set, but they didn't use it when it was needed. What kind of faith do we have when we stand before God when he said, I gave you the tools. I gave you the armor, as we talked about this morning. I gave you the knowledge to go forth. I gave you the command to go forth and spread the word, and you did nothing. Again, James says this kind of faith is dead. He asks the question, can this kind of faith save anyone? And he gives three, I'm sorry, rather four strong replies in verse 14, in verse 17, in verse 20, and verse 26. The conclusion he comes to and shares with us, there is no profit if we don't have true faith. This kind of faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Verse 20 as well. Do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Simply put, faith should drive us to action. It should cause us to move, to speak, to serve our God. That's a good question to ask somebody when you're trying to evangelize who says they already know what they need to do. It's a good question to ask our brothers and sisters in Christ that might be falling short and think they are doing enough simply because they believe in God, but they're more like a person in a movie theater. They show up, they watch the weekly new program, they listen to the sermon, and they go home. And nothing really goes beyond that. Is that kind of faith useful to God? Is it pleasing to him? Is it going to save you? Can it do any good? And the simple answer that each of us can come to, even just by reading verses 15 and 16, in the same way that if someone is starving, and you say, go be warmed and be filled, does nothing to actually help them. In the same way that if a doctor goes, 
Well, I can see you choking there. I know you're about to die of asphyxiation. I'll pray for you. That does no good. It does us no good to know the truth. To see people walking around in darkness every single day. Lost with the answers at our fingertips and not putting it to use. So maybe you don't have the right kind of faith. Maybe you don't have the right kind of knowledge. Maybe you're worshiping somewhere that's not emphasizing this point. It's not about you just showing up to services every once in a while and dropping some money in a basket. It's you going out and being active. In fact, it's more than just believing. This dead faith barely even believes, but this kind of faith, even then, James says, is a demonic faith, if you just believe and leave it at that. Verse 18 continues, But someone will say, or someone will answer, some of your translations may say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Because James recognizes what the next argument will be. People don't like it when you point out that their faith isn't enough. Because it makes them uncomfortable. They already feel happy. They already feel content. They feel like They've done something wonderful. They believe in God. Maybe they've dedicated their life to Christ, whatever that looks like. But they're not actually doing anything. But they feel accomplished. When you challenge that, people tend to rebel. Oh yeah, well you show me your works without faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. Notice how James responds. That kind of question is ridiculous. So let me counter it. You believe God? That's wonderful. Even the demons believe and tremble. Just believing, just having faith that God exists, that He is all-powerful, doesn't actually mean anything. We see multiple examples of this. Mark 3 and verse 11. They called Jesus the Son of God before anybody else did on this earth. They were still demons. They still trembled. It didn't do them any good. Those in Luke chapter 8, they begged him, don't send us back to the abyss. Don't send us to hell. They believed in hell. That didn't do them any good. They believed that Christ is the ultimate judge. As two raving lunatics come out of a cave in Matthew chapter 8, who no men could overpower, behold, they cried, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us or to judge us before the time? We know that God will be the ultimate judge. They believe more than many people do. That God isn't going to let everybody into heaven. He is going to be a judge. He is going to discern and part the righteous from the unrighteous. They believe what many in the religious world don't even believe. But was that enough to save them? No. What about in James chapter 2, verses 18 and 19? Just because we have faith, just because we believe something strongly, and that's what that is. That's a strong reaction there in verse 18. It's a passionate response. You show me your faith by your works, and I'll show you my faith without works. Just because they get angry and they get loud, does it make them right? We need to be ready to respond to that. That's wonderful that you're so passionate. That's wonderful that you believe in God. But is that enough to save? Is that enough to get you into heaven? Is that what God teaches? Faith without obedience is no better than the demons. John 14 and verse 21. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. 
He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Sometimes people use faith and love synonymously. But I love Christ. But I love God. I have faith. I love them. How could that not be enough? We're we're using the term love incorrectly. I think more importantly, sometimes we're using the term love not in the same way that Christ defined it. We can run into that with any communication. We're both using the same word, and we both are using wildly different definitions. Jesus not only talked about love in John chapter 14, he defined it for us. He who loves me keeps my commandments. He who loves the Father keeps his commandments. And God loves who keeps his commandments. Obedience has to be a part of that faith. Obedience has to be a part of that love. Or else it's a pale imitation. Just because you recognize something as truth isn't the kind of faith that Christ is looking for. Every knee will bow Every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord. That does not mean that every need that will be saved and every tongue will be saved. It means one day everyone's eyes will be opened and they will acknowledge the truth that they have been ignoring for most of their lives. Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But that alone is not enough to say. That alone is not enough to be said, well done, my good and faithful servant. We can think we love God, but we do nothing for them. We do nothing to help him. We do nothing to serve him. We can feel strongly about what we think God's word says without actually following what he told us to do. That does us no good. That doesn't help us. It doesn't prove our love for the Father. We have to be faithful as He commands, not as we think. Because the only faith that God will accept is an active and righteous faith. Faith cometh from hearing. Hearing through the word of Christ. It's not that you have faith that your parents instilled in you. They may be right, they may be wrong. Maybe some of both. It's not faith that your preacher instilled in you. He may be right, he may be wrong, might be some of both. It's what God calls us to do. It's what his word says. It's not what I believe or what I have made up. It's not even that I have to know why God has said or not said something. It's simply that I have to know if this is what God says, then that is what it is. That is how I will live. That is what I will do. That is what I will speak. And I'll do it every day as long as I live to the best of my ability. James shows then Two examples of what real faith looks like. Just like he can give us some bad examples of what demons look like, of what their faith looks like, he can show us what real faith looks like as well. Verse 20, But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? The scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it is accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. He gets around to the question that was posed in verse 18. 
I don't have to argue with you arbitrarily about what faith means. I can show it to you. Abraham, who even before sacrificing his son Isaac, was already counted faithful. Was already called a friend of God. But he had more that he had to keep doing. He had more work and more things that God told him to do, sometimes even like sacrificing his own son, that to him did not make sense. To him, he found a way to mentally justify it to himself, even though that fell short of what God was actually doing. But that didn't matter. If this is what God has told me to do, then this is what I will do. Faith is a continual process. Faith is shown not just once, even when we're baptized. Faith is shown throughout every part of our life. When we take action and not when we sit by the wayside and do nothing. Faith is shown in verse 25. Likewise was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Oh, she had faith that at first looked a whole lot like the demons. Well, I know who God is. There is not a person in this city who does not know who the God of the Israelites is. The God who parted the Red Sea and destroyed the Egyptians. The God who destroyed Sihon and Og on the other side of the river has now come here also, and we tremble with fear. Then she asks, what do I need to do in order to be saved? How can I, myself, and my household be spared? Even though she was in sin. Even though not only was she just a harlot, she was another individual in this country, in this city, that God had deemed it's time to be destroyed. Because of her faith and because of her actions, by following the instructions that were left for her, she and her household were spared. Faith without works didn't save her. If she'd just hung a rope out her window without faith, it wouldn't have done any good. Doing as God instructed because it was God who gave the instructions is what spared her life. So the conclusion James reaches is, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. We can come to no other conclusion. It's how he opened that part of the letter, and it's how he closes this part of the letter. What does it profit, brethren, if someone has faith and he does not have works? The answer is it profits nothing. Faith without works is dead. Faith alone is a demonic faith, and it is not enough to save. Verse 24 tells us exactly that. Verse 24 reads, You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. It is not enough to save. Perfect faith is only found when we serve our God as he commands. Do you see then that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? It's a shorter lesson this evening. By my timer, it's been 24 minutes. You could talk a little bit longer. You could talk a little bit shorter as you share this with folks around you. Faith is a big subject that a lot of people trip up over. There's a lot that are out there preaching that you just need to believe. You just need to love God. You just need to accept him into your heart. You just need to sit there and send a check in every so often or warm a seat in a pew. And that's as deep as servitude to God gets. James explicitly tells us, the entirety of God's word explicitly tells us, that has never been the case. Whether that be the lesson we looked at this morning, that we need to be a servant of God, 
or else we have nothing good to look forward to. We need to have faith that is active and working or else we don't know God. We don't truly serve him. Strive to take some of these things and hopefully put them to use this week. Share this with others. It's 12 short verses. Doesn't take long to cover. There's some really good questions in there that can be put to use. God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It can divide any of those arguments, any of those questions, any of those things that plague people's mind. It can knock down even the surest of fortresses that I know what I need to do in order to be saved and challenge them with what God actually teaches. So put it to use. If you're here this evening and you've not been putting those things to use in your life, let us help you by coming forward and being baptized, confessing of your sins, if that needs to be taken care of, or asking for the prayers of the saints. Whatever we can do to help, please take advantage of this opportunity right now. As together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.